Oftentimes I come here and talk about The Breakdown, the song that Prince introduced on the Artificial Age album, it's the 37th album, and the song Breakdown. It's a breakdown on America. And the breakdown has to do with us not knowing that we're reincarnated souls, that we are holy, eternal souls. <laughs> and the train agrees. Um, when I was in the after place, um, when I clinically died, I, I met the creator. You guys that watch the channel know that I met him as the one we know as Prince, and he showed himself to me as otherworldly and more than just a human. It was like a machine man. If you ever listen to the song Mr. Roboto, Machine Almighty words describe it almost to a T because music is scripture, it's lyrical. Everything that the one we know as Prince could do to show us and tell us what I'm telling you is true, he did. He put it in the lyrics and in the videos. Here I want to show you an example of the video My Name is Prince because in it Vanessa Bartholomew is saying that when the kids got to Paisley Park there was a mannequin in a tube because he's always depicting himself as a mannequin and in the song Jughead he says I'm not posing I'm just frozen if you and your kids showed up only to find a group of imposters on the stage there was apparently some sort of a glass tube with a mannequin in it dressed as print and a group of imposters on the stage there was apparently some sort of a glass tube with a mannequin in it dressed as print also I believe this interview is with Sheila E it says there was a mannequin for when he would appear and disappear. There were all these cool magic tricks to get prints on and off stage. It was like a live computer. Now, I don't even know, I, I don't claim to know how it's some form of electricity uh, or electricity itself that the creator is re- uh, able to be reanimated. It's not so hard to understand that he has abilities and uh, to change and be anything and show himself as anything and show his power any way he would like. But again, um, music itself is a gift to our world because without it, it would be dark, dreary, and dry and I don't think there would be any life in it. That's my personal opinion. So the creator expressed himself to our generation as music um, and, and that depiction um, one of them was as Prince. The reason I say one of them was Prince is because at one point he told me that he was all of them and I took that as meaning he was all the performers um, because he is the creator as I mentioned he can show himself as anything or anybody at any time the lyrics, I'm not a woman, I'm not a man, I'm something you'll never understand. I'm not a human, I'm a dove, I'm your conscience, I am love. These lyrics were not just for no reason. Everything was like scripture, like biblical scripture, except for it was with the lyrics to the songs. One of my mistakes in trying to introduce this information has been assuming that everyone knows as much about Prince as I do, but I'm trying to tell people as if you know nothing at all. It's very important to lay the groundwork for what I'm saying. Take for instance this photo. This is 1999 on the side. It's the new master. That's what this is, the album. He depicts himself as part human and part robot. And guess what? The robot part is very matrixy. Well, I mentioned the Matrix because uh, Prince was known to say getting on the computer is cool, but don't let the computer get on you. Y'all saw the Matrix. So the reason that he was saying that is because he, being the creator, saw the future. And he saw what technology was going to do for the evil ones. Technology enables them to do a lot of things that you wouldn't really consider. Um, they're a cult. They can be demonic. It's mind bending. Um, it's MK Ultra uh, techniques from days of old, and it's what we call technology. Don't be fooled by the internet. It's it's cool. It's cool to get on the computer, but don't let the computer get on you. 
we can upload his consciousness. There is a war going on, the battlefields in the mind, and the prize is the soul. You heard him say, the battlefield is the, in the mind and the prize is the souls. It's because our souls are reincarnated, rechargeable sources of energy. And it's the creator himself that created you, that sustains us. He is that life force. It's when he says, I'm your conscience, I am love. Um, he is that life force. That's what makes the prize the soul. Now, also on uh, the Matrix, there's that gruesome scene where Neo wakes up um, after he finds out that he is basically a sleeping, a walking, sleeping person. and I were, were walking around in this physical world um, on the Kabbalistic tree of life. It's the world of action um, and formation, I believe. Um, so we're in that place because when he wakes up, he sees that he was asleep in one place, but he becomes aware in another place. Now, though it wasn't exactly like that when I died and was in the life after what was impressed upon me and made clear is that we as human beings um, while we're asleep we are 1 60th of being dead it's like as close to being dead as you can be while you're sleeping so you don't know what's happening in that alternate universe when you're sleeping so it was shown to me in the life after something similar to the matrix depiction um, but it was more of uh, our connection to stars, galaxies, constellations, the footprint that the Creator set out in an, elect in an electromagnetic way that comes up off of the Earth that He showed me. So like if you picture the globe, the Earth, and then around it is this electromagnetic field. He showed us how somehow we each have like this footprint or fingerprint of ourselves. Um, on a specific area of the earth and that is so that we can fulfill our purpose so instead of waking up in some kind of weird embryonic state i was shown how we connect to greater purposes and all the more reason that the evil ones want to separate us from our soul purposes especially me i say especially me not to take any greater place um but because my soul purpose was explained to me in life after um and this is my sole purpose to be telling the truth of the Creator. It's why I watched him, loved him, studied him for 40 years of my life now. Um, a long way to go still in discovering just how great he is and how mysterious the ways through which he works are. The other thing I wanted to mention was in the video, it says we can upload his consciousness. And that is a scene from the movie Trans Transcendence with Johnny Depp. In that movie, Johnny Depp is a great, you know, scholar of some sort, and they take his mind, and they connect it to all these weird electrodes, and they upload his consciousness to be a supercomputer. That is what was shown to me, the creator. See, when I met him, he wasn't just walking and talking with me as Prince the whole time. Um, he showed himself to me as Prince. Um, I recall walking and talking in this spirit soul world. But he also showed me images from another space and time uh, where he was like the machine man and he was on a bed and he was incapacitated um, as a vegetable but with a working mind and heart and organs and feelings but his body was as a machine. Because he is 
able to be reanimated with electricity they were just keeping him alive and then body parts were replaced I believe with prosthesis prosthesis <laughs> prosthesis anyway I don't know if they're memories or flashbacks or what they are but I've mentioned it before it's like the song possessed have you ever had the feeling that someone was contemplating chopping you up into itty bitty pieces and selling you for a jigsaw puzzle it was shown to me that experiments were done on him and he has been made to he's been kept alive while his soul is utilized in other ways so understand when i met him it was 2010 and he told me in 2010 that he was there as only a soul and he knew that i would recognize him as only a soul you may not know, the media promotes that Prince had hip surgery in 2010. And I've discussed in depth on other videos how um, the song, In France, a skinny man died of a big disease with a little name. By chance, his girlfriend came across a needle and soon she did the same. When I was there, I died of an overdose from a needle. And um, he told me that he as his, I don't know, man self, had AIDS. And I, I don't remember how or what, but with all the tests, there's this saying, and I know he doesn't like it, so forgive me. The saying, what's good for the goose is good for the gander. The sacrifice of Victor, everything he did was a sacrifice. So these tests, these drugs, these diseases, these horrible souls and crimes against nature and crimes against were all done to him because they wanted to dehumanize and tear down our creator as much as possible. So it's, it's even much darker than I can even bring myself to say. He told me of clones, altars, um, and how we are all creations of his to fulfill his purposes and man because he contractually still had time left to serve the others and was dying in this way um, because he is able to be reanimated, he, when I say dying in this way, I don't mean like for good. Um, he had time on the contract still that needed to be fulfilled. And he said that that's why he brought me there to the Life After Place, is to tell me about the contract and about my soul purpose. And he showed me all these plans and all these things that I'm talking about and then he showed me the evil of the world and their plan to erase the creator as we know him to break down the creator to break down America to break down holy souls um, to steal rape pillage and burn God forbid our towns our families our children to make people take RFID chips and totally disconnect them from the Creator or any awareness of Him for all time, God forbid. He showed me the plan of, like, the North Korean leaders, radical Islam, all the sexual deviancy in the religious cults, the KKK, which is who the religious cults are, actually. Um, they want to break down the Creator for this Davidic King bloodline. And because we are re reincarnated souls, that's who Prince Rogers Nelson is, was, and showed himself to be. It's just that most people would think that what I'm saying is crazy, but it's absolutely the most sane thing in the world to me because I thought it my entire life before I even met him in the afterlife. And so then once he started telling me the plan and that, that he was going to be dead, he still had time on the contract to fulfill. And what did I... Th 
he showed me all this stuff and then said, well, what would you do, Elizabeth? And so I said, well, you know, I'll do this, this, and this. So come to find out, I, fulfilling my sole purpose, signed up for some things contractually that didn't begin happening until 2020. I know it's a twisty, turny story, but again, I want to go back to 2010 because prior to 2010, Prince the Entertainer was very reclusive, perhaps the most reclusive ever known. And he didn't give interviews, he wasn't seen riding his bike on the street, he wasn't seen walking around the t town, wasn't seen at Walgreens, none of that. Um, but after 20, well, when I was there in 2010, he told me about the altars and the clones. He told me how there had been a program, and I believe it's run out of Bull Run, Oregon, which is why the tour bus at Paisley Park has an Oregon license plate. Um, it's an underground cloning facility um, there, and there's this whole huge thing to do with clones, like on the Matrix scene, specifically made to be his clone. Uh, because there was a lot of them needed, uh, because he's neither man or woman. I guess there's both sexes playing him. I know it's weird, but it's like my video say Paisley Park was the most squeaky clean cover that our nation could have ever fathomed. And you know how the secret deviant ones work. The cleaner the cover, the dirtier it is on the inside. And regarding the secret cloning facility at Bull Run near Mount Hood, um, it says that people were told that this large tract of land is simply for Portland's water supply, and let, yet several years ago, this military unit um, recon got this info, and they were able to identify three strongly guarded rings of defense at the Bull Run Reservoir. The area has lots of electric surveillance. Um, this is the license plate on the tour bus that was parked in the back of Paisley Park. Ann Tolufson, Regulatory Affairs Manager, uh, she also worked in Oregon, so that's interesting. Now, Ann Tolufson also had something interesting to say about the 2010 timeline. Tolufson is quoted in GQ magazine of saying, in the 90s, he wouldn't walk anywhere, even within Paisley Park, without a bodyguard. And then I'd say around 2010, I'm not going to say he stopped caring, but he stopped being over the top. Just didn't give it. So the 2010 timeline and Ann Tolufson are relevant because on July 20th, 2010, when I passed, uh, the 2010 Welcome to America tour was in France at that time, but then when they went back and started performing, I think it was on July 25th, Prince had a whole new backup band and they started performing a new set list. Um, and it, it was shown to me that there would be another lookalike Prince taking the place of the other one that they said was away and started wearing flats because he had alleged hip surgery. In 2010, being shown the future, he discussed that he was going to go, I don't know, away for a while or something, or that I wasn't going to be able to hear from him for 10 years, but in 2020, that I would be able to hear from him in a whole new way. Close your eyes and count to ten, and when you open them, I'll be standing naked with nothing but a smile on and then that was going to fulfill my obligation to the contract that that he explained to me in the life after place that had to do with my sole purpose. So I, I think I asked kind of in essence so my war was explained to me that I being in this physical body of Elizabeth Pride uh, was molded by the creator specifically by being lovingly brainwashed by the music, the lyrics, the mannerisms of a history that we had together as souls. Um, that, like I have been saying the whole time, the music is lyrical, biblical. It it guided me towards my Bible. Um, and so for me, putting these things together in, in the life after space place, again, it wasn't hard at all because it was, it was what my mind had already seen and heard listening to the music in my own mine so that purpose was explained to me that I was here 
handcrafted by him to be able to be as one of the the altars uh, a vessel for his intellect so instead of the others the evil ones being able to take that intellect in 2010 when he told me he was sick and dying of AIDS it, he told me that he brought my soul there at that very same time so that I could go through these afterlife soul tests to see if I was worthy enough or able to be a vessel for him to use um, and and I did and, and I did a lot of things but after I did all these things and ascended all these levels it was shown to me that in the future which was 2020 when we all went on COVID lockdown that I would be able to hear from the Creator in a whole new way in order to, to, to fulfill those obligations and that's where the story gets very weird and if you want to know the finite details on that you can go watch the video t entitled uh, Temptation. It has to do uh, with Adam and Eve sexual temptation and what my end of the contract was and what I began to do in 2020. It's very detailed and um, it's very private. I don't like sharing it but I have to. So, In essence what I'm trying to get across I guess is how the Creator began contacting me or I began being able to hear from him literally telepathy style meditation style uh, there's this feeling this energy uh, that enables us to connect and I I just I know who I'm talking to it's the same one that I met in the life after um, and we are one soul and and I'm here to share with you who he is and the message that he wants to get across this isn't about me it's just about how I came to be being used um, because that was my sole purpose was to take the place of one of those so that I could take the exceptional honor and burden of having this information and needing to share it with the world and praying and begging for them to listen to me so that they can understand um, just how duped we have all been but also just how great the Creator is and all the very loving sacrifices that have been made for us. Man, I told you it's a long, twisty story, but the electric part is what I want to get to because electricity, you saw in that Matrix clip that everything was about electricity and how those uh, lives were being sustained by electricity. And I told you the Creator was like, electricity, the life force within. Um, in 2020, when we all went on COVID lockdown, there was this strange spring rain all around us and things started being told to me in a telepathy style that a, a person who didn't know themselves as well as I do know myself um, might have thought they were going crazy and I might have just for a second but you know what I did I whipped out my Bible and all the things that I've been studying for the past 30 years the tree of life just the, the lyrics the music everything and the Creator hand walked me into a relationship of being able to hear from him but it was it was it took time and it was done in a myriad of different ways and one of those ways is the whole world around us was so gray and so cloudy in the spring of 2020 that it that it, it literally to me it felt like the world wanted to like it was closing in and and I was so moved by this electrical lightning thunderstorm that we were having that I went out on the porch and I began saying different things. Holy shit! Dude, this thunderstorm is coming from every direction because it's all around us. Can't you guys feel it? I, I was so moved I even said the Lord's Prayer out there on the porch. I started to talk about how people in their my age um, 40s, 50s, they knew something was changing. I felt that my life was being changed. Here it comes, y'all. Better start praying and pray without ceasing. Pray to your Creator. Your... It is now time for us 
to be there for each other. This is a spiritual darkness that is trying to come upon this world. I know some people that know heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil, Father. Deliver us from evil. Your mercy and your will be done always and forever. On earth as it is in heaven, as above, so below. We believe in you, mighty King. We believe in you. Your birds are crying out. Your people are crying out. If we're worth saving, save us now, Father. Everybody knows. When love calls, you gotta go. Consider the album covers. This one is for the Lotus Flower album. Prince depicts himself as the intellect receiving, is like in an egg shape, and it's giving and receiving like an electrical energy within the lotus flower, which the deeper you bury a lotus flower in the dirt, the better it grows. It's also depicted as, as lightning and energy in the guitar coming down into the earth. And over here, with the earth, um, he talks about if you could rid the earth of anyone you choose which ones would you keep and which ones would you lose it's not so strange what i'm saying the depictions of electricity it's very important to know that on the graffiti bridge soundtrack this portion here right above my finger is a portion of the cern bubble chamber cern is i believe reference to prince rogers nelson that they had a demonic opening ceremony for that you should be able to find on youtube anyway cern is depicted on that so again it's the electricity with aura um that she's receiving the signals and that's that's what we can do there's like this electricity over here on sign of the times you've got the same electricity in the little crystal ball type purple thing here the crystal ball uh the crystal ball album oh there it is called crystal ball because of course the creator has a crystal ball and you'll hear all kinds of songs about the future Think about the future.